uh, Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to all of the witnesses for coming and testifying today. Uh, it, it seems to me that, that drones are a technological tool that, as with most tools, can be used productively uh, or can be abused. Uh, when we think about our conduct overseas, in particular in counterterrorism, uh, I think drones have proven an effective tool in certain circumstances and in particular have enabled us to deal with terrorists without placing servicemen and women directly in harm's way. Uh, at the same time, it seems to me that overseas our conduct needs to be consistent with the laws of war and domestically in the United States that our conduct in all circumstances needs to be consistent with the Constitution. Uh, and how that applies to drone surveillance or a topic for another day, use of, le use of lethal force, uh, is not necessarily an easy question. Uh, I'd, I'd like to begin, Mr. Miller, with a question for you, uh, which is, are there limitations on the uses of drones that, that, that your members would support uh, as, as common sense protections of the privacy of, of American citizens? Uh, the easy answer is yes. Um, we uh, already looked to case law. One of the things that we've positioned our program on or the concept is that we've not really invented um, a new ability to collect information. You know, um, it, the camera it has done that for us. It's done that for us for decades and, in, in, you know, in the past. Um, and so there's case law out there that speaks to the direction of which we take when we consider putting a camera in the air. Um, it, it, you know, really, the fact that it flies on this size system or, a you know, the typical police helicopter you see um, really hasn't changed the way we think about it or view it. Um, so so what, what limitations would, would your members support? Um, I, <clears throat> let me clarify. I think the limitations that we'd support are the ones that we currently have identified through the study of case law that have, you know, that has occurred until this time. It seems to me that there should be an important distinction uh, between individuals for whom there is probable cause, substantial evidence to be suspected of a crime, and law enforcement has always had extensive tools for operating in that environment, uh, and, and the collection of data concerning ordinary citizens. Uh, when you overlay uh, the availability of drones with the proliferation of things such as stationary cameras, um, I'll note my hometown of Houston recently voted to take down red light cameras. Um, I think a great many of us, myself included, uh, have very deep concerns about the government collecting information on the citizenry. Uh, and with the ease and availability of drones, I think there is a real concern that the day-to-day -day conduct of American citizens going about their business uh, might be monitored, cataloged, uh, and recorded by the federal government. Uh, and, and, and I, for one, would have very deep concerns about that. Um, I, I would ask a question of, of Ms. Stefanovic. Uh, do you share those concerns? And, and if so, what reasonable limitations should be considered to protect the privacy rights uh, of all Americans? I think any time when you come up with a new surveillance technology, you're going to have instances where the technology catches bad actors doing bad deeds. However, if that, those few instances are at the expense of dragnet constant surveillance of all citizens as they go about their daily lives, it's not consistent with our constitutional protections and what our country was built on. I think we need to prevent drones from becoming alternatives for police patrols um, flying up and down, or in some instances, when you're not talking about aerial drones driving up and down the street um, collecting all sorts of information um, about individuals um, supplemented by the facial recognition technology, the automatic license plate readers. 
I think we do need to enforce a warrant requirement for drones in circumstances where they're collecting criminal evidence. And I think we need to address, um, in addition to law enforcement use, also commercial and individual uses of drones. Mr. Toscano. Um, Senator, I think that's, that's the core of the issue that we have here today. Uh, the conversation should be focused on what is the government's right to collect, to use, to store, to disseminate, to sh share information. Um, last year, we uh, put out a code of conduct that says this is how you should use UASs in order to get the benefit and to make sure that you do not violate the privacy of an individual. The IACP, the International Association of Chiefs of Police, put out their guidelines, of which the ACLU has endorsed as being the good guidelines in order to how to use this technology. There is a tremendous opportunity for this technology to be used. And it isn't a different type of surveillance. The technology is the same technology that exists today. It's how it's being used. And I understand the benefits that you get from having a low-cost, uh, reliable capability that can provide you with uh, the ability to move a mission package payload from one point to another. But what you do with that and, who, and the human being that's involved in it is the one that's responsible. Just because there isn't a pilot in the plane, he, the individual that's operating that platform is still responsible. And if that person uses it in an incorrect way or misuses it, then that person should be held accountable. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.